So we're gonna kick off with Liberty High School next. First things first, Tabby Bot performing excerpt from Sugar by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Left behind. It's morning and the sun looks like a wobbly egg yolk in the sky. The air is flinty green. Gray clouds are disappearing. Me and Mr. Beale are sitting on the porch steps. The Beals were a wall away when I was born. You were fussy even then, screamed all day, all night, Mr. Beale tells me. He's smiling. I wrap my hand around his tough leather hands. I love to hear about when I was born. You had spunk. Still do, I say. He gently taps my nose. Tell me what trouble you've been into. Really? Mr. Beale is the only one who likes to hear my tales. I wish I could tell him about Billy. Mr. Beale blinks. He's waiting, hoping I'll make him laugh, ease the, erase the tiredness and sadness from his face. I say, my voice low. I pulled a tail feather from Rooster Ugly. No. Yes, I say, poking out my chest. Rooster Ugly, scrawny with red eyes, is as mean as they come. Ugly pecked at the littlest hen. The one you call Peanut? Yes, Peanut wasn't doing nothing, just eating grain. Ugly pecked her, so I pecked Ugly, plucked his feather. Did he chase you? Yes, but I ran faster, climbed a tree. Can't have Rooster Ugly pecking at Peanut. He shakes his gray head. Not right. That's right. What else do you do? Mr. Beale's eyes have clouds inside them. He sees me, but not so well. One day, he says I'll disappear. The clouds will make his eyes see nothing but white. He says when that happens, my tails will comfort him. Mrs. Thornton walks by. She sniffs. Her hips boom back and forth like sticks beating on a drum. Mr. Petey, who's almost as nice as Mr. Beale, tips his hat. Mrs. Thornton still sniffs as if he's done wrong. I scoot closer to Mr. Beale. I laid a cage for a skunk. I'm going to catch one. What are you going to do with it? I mumble. What? I mumble louder. Give it to Mrs. Thornton. Mr. Beale falls down laughing. She'll be cleaning her house for a week. He sits up, wiping tears from his eyes. You know, you're not supposed to be playing pranks on grown folks. I know. I can't help myself. If Ma were still here, I'd be a worry to her. A fine worry, Mr. Beale says. Then he looks far off with his blurry, bleary eyes. I know he's missing his children. Late at night, missing children is all Mr. and Mrs. Beale talk about. They wonder what it's like up north, if their children are happy, earning money, if they made a mistake not traveling north. I don't think that they know I can hear, but the wall between us is thin, and most nights I stay awake for hours imagining me and Pa and Ma together again. Thank you very much, Tabby. Next, we will have the first act and scene from Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun, performed by James Thomas Case and Erica Michelle Eggleston. You know what I was thinking about in the bathroom this morning? No. How come you always try to be so pleasant? What is there to be pleasant about? You want to know what I was thinking about in the bathroom or not? I know what you're thinking about. About what me and Willie Harris was talking about last night. Willie Harris is a good-for-nothing loudmouth. Anybody who talks to me has got to be a good-for-nothing loudmouth, ain't he? What do you know about who's just good for nothing loud mouth. Charlie Adkins was just a good for nothing loud mouth too, wasn't he? When he wanted me to go in the dry cleaning business with him. And now he's grossing a hundred thousand a year. A hundred thousand dollars a year. You still call him a loud mouth. Oh, <laughs> Walter Lee. You tired, ain't you? Tired of me, the boy, the way we live, this beat up hole, everything, ain't you? So tired, moaning and groaning all the time. But you wouldn't do nothing to help, would you? You couldn't be on my side for long for nothing, could you? Walter, please leave me alone. A man needs for a woman to back him up. Walter! Mama would listen to you. No, she knew. She'd listen to you more than she does me and Benny. She thinks more of you. All you gotta do is sit down with her when you're drinking your coffee one morning and, uh, you know, talk about the things you like to do. And you just sip your coffee, see the way you Easy, like anything you've been thinking about, deal. Walter Lee's so interested in about the store and all, and sip some more coffee. Like what you've been saying ain't really anything important to you. The next thing you know, she be listening good and asking you questions. Then when I come home, I tell her the details. This ain't no fly-by-night proposition, baby. I mean, we figured that out, me, Willie, and Bobo. 
Bobo? Yeah, you see, this little liquor store we got in mind cost 75000 When We figured the initial investment on the place would be about 35000 See, then the 10000 each course, there's a couple hundred you got to pay off so you don't spend your life wasting for them clowns to get your license approved. You mean graft? Don't call it that. See there? That just goes to show you what women don't understand about this world. Baby, nothing don't happen in this world unless you pay somebody off. Walter, leave me alone. Eat your eggs, they gonna be cold. That's it, there you are. Man says to his women, I got me a dream. His women says, eat your eggs. Man says, I gotta take hold of this here world, baby. And woman says, eat your eggs and go to work. Man say, I gotta change my life. I'm choking to death, baby. And his woman said, your eggs are getting cold. Walter, that ain't none of our money. This morning I was looking in the mirror and I was thinking about it. I'm 35 years old. I've been married 11 years. I got a boy who sleeps in the living room. And all I got to give him was stories about how rich white people live. Eat your eggs, Walter. Damn my eggs. Damn all the eggs that ever was. Then go to work. See, I'm trying to talk to you about myself. And all you could say is eat them eggs and go to work. Honey, you never say nothing new. I listen to you every day, every night, every morning, and you never say nothing new. So you would rather be Mr. Arnold than a chauffeur. So I would rather be living in Buckingham Palace. That's just what's wrong with the colored women in this world. Don't understand about building their men up and making them feel like they're somebody. Look at you do something. There are colored men in this world who do things. No thanks to the colored women. Well... Being a colored woman, I guess I can't help myself none. We are one group of men tied to a race of women with small minds. Thank you. Thank you. A really amazing performance. Next up, we have America by Claude McKay, being performed by Charlotte Elizabeth Elburn. Although she feeds, feeds me bre bread of bitterness and sinks into my throat her tiger's tooth, Stealing my breath of life, I will confess. I love this cultured hell that tests my youth. Her vigor flows like a tide into my blood, giving me strength erect against her hate. Her bigness sweeps me like a flood. Yet, as a rebel fronts a king and state, I stand within her walls with not a shred of terror, malice, not a word of jeer. Darkly, I gaze into these days ahead and see her might and granite wonders there beneath the touch on your touch of time's unyearning hand, like priceless treasures sinking in the sand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Next, we're going to have Georgia Johnson's The Heart of a Woman, performed by Liberty's Alyssa Jade Farrell. The heart of a woman goes forth with the dawn, as a lone bird, soft winging, so restlessly on. Afar o'er life's turrets and vows does it roam. In the wake of those echoes, the heart calls home. The heart of a woman falls back with the night and enters some alien cage in its plight and tries to forget it has dreamed of the stars while it breaks, breaks, breaks on the sheltering bars. Coming up next, we're going to have Liberty's own Gabriella Evelyn Kostadinov performing The White House by Claude McKay. Your door is shut against my tightened face, and I am sharp as steel with discontent but I possess the courage and the grace to bear my anger proudly and unbend. The pavement slabs burn loose beneath my feet and my passion rends my vitals as I pass, a chafing savage down the decent street where boldly shines your shuttered door of glass. Oh, I must search for wisdom every hour deep in my wrathful bosom sore and raw and find in it the superhuman power to hold me to the letter of your law. Oh, I must keep my heart inviolate against the potent poison of your heart. Next, we have Casey Owen West performing Saturday's Child by County Colon. Spoon, with the stars strung for a rattle, I cut my teeth as the black raccoon for implements of battle. Some are swaddled in silken down and heralded by a star. They swathed my limbs in a sackcloth gown on a night that was black as tar. For some, Godfather and Goddame, 
the opulent fairies be. Dame Poverty gave me my name, and pain godfathered me. For I was born on Saturday. Bad time for planting a seed, was all my father had to say, and one more mouth to feed. Death cut the strings that gave me life and handed me to sorrow, the only kind of middle wife my folks could beg or borrow. Our last reader from Liberty High School is Carrick Cath Catherine Wojciechowski performing Souls of Black Folk by W.E.B. E. Dubois. <laughs> the nation has not yet found peace from its sins. The land freedman has not yet found in freedom his promised land. Whatever of good may have come in these years of change, the shadow of a deep disaster rests upon the Negro people. A disappointment all the more bitter because the unattained ideal was unbounded saved by the simple ignorance of a lowly people. Thank you to our speakers from Liberty High School. Mm -hmm. 